In today's video, I'm going to show you how to paint this parrot without any underpainting sketch. The first thing I'm doing is to decide where is going to be my starting point. I need to make sure that I left enough space for his wings and everything else that I'm going to paint. Because I'm not using any sketch, I'm observing my subject very carefully. I'm really paying attention to angles and proportions. Today I'm using Arch 140 pounds watercolor paper, but you can use any other watercolor paper that you have available. I recommend you use Saunders watercolor paper because comparing to the rest of them stays wet for longer. So if you are a beginner or if you live in a climate that your paper dries really fast, using this paper is going to make the process a little bit easier for you. As always, I started with my lightest color, which is yellow here, and then wetting only the sections that I'm going to paint next, and adding the color Thalo Blue Turquoise by Daniel Smith to it. As you can see, I'm not using a underpainting sketch but in a way i'm sketching using my brush i know this method might be new to most of you guys but once you practice and get used to it it's actually a lot easier than sketching and trying to paint on top of it i try to keep my first layers fairly wet so when i come back to them and add more colors like i did with brown here um, my first layer hasn't dried yet basically it gives me more time to observe my subject and see if i want to change anything before it dries like here that I decided to add some feather-like brush strokes before it dries and gives me a, a hard edge. Here I'm adding the darker version of Thalo Blue Turquoise. So I basically mix some indigo to the mixture to make it darker. This adds uh, interest to your painting. If you only use one color for a section like this, it can make your painting a little bit boring, but simple at the same time. So, it comes to your taste that you want it to be more minimalistic or you want to you want it to be more interesting I forgot to film it, but I decide the colors that I'm going to use in a painting before I start um, painting that subject. So this yellow that I'm painting for the body is the same as the yellow that I started my painting. 
Normally, I'm not adding new colors later on in the painting because I feel like this gives my painting a better color harmony. There are different ways to create color harmony in your paintings. One of my favorite ways for watercolor painting is that I choose my colors beforehand and just stick to those colors. But when I'm oil painting, I like to use a limited palette of just primary colors plus uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and viridian and basically mix all my colors using those and that gives me a um, good color harmony. Here I did the same process and I had some very little pigment on my brush and I wetted the area that I wanted to add color to so I can see the wetted area because if I have no color on my brush uh, it's kind of hard to see it depends on your lighting so when I knew that I wetted the area the section that I want to paint then I added the colors and also added some uh, Conacrodon Burn Scarlet to uh, vary my colors a little bit and make it more interesting. Conacrodon Burn Scarlet is a really interesting color because when you swatch it on its own, you may not really find it very interesting, but it interacts really good with other colors and gives you very nice um, color fusions and if you get a background it's gonna look really nice which i get in a few minutes later in the video because i know i'm going to still work on his right side so i'm being careful to keep the left side fairly wet so by the time that I finish the right side and I'm going to paint the left side it's still wet and it hasn't dried and gives me a cauliflower where I don't want it I really enjoy painting in this method because I feel like it requires your 100% attention and focus and I feel like it's very therapeutic for me when I used to use sketches I remember I could even watch a TV show or um, while I was doing it it didn't really need that much focus because the underpainting sketch was already there and I only need to color it so um, but this way it's just a lot more engaging in my opinion as you can see I sprayed the lower side of his body because I prefer it to be blurred I don't want to put a lot of details down there because it's going to if I do it's going to distract my viewers from my focal point which is his wing i just soften some of the edges to bring a tiny bit of color to his face that is not just pure white Now I'm wetting the area of the wing that I know I'm going to paint and adding the same colors as I use for his body. First I'm adding Conacrodon gold and then some Aussie red gold on top of it and later I'll add some Conacrodon burnt scarlet as well. 
as you can see I try to have more random brush strokes you don't want it to be too uniformed and um, that's gonna make it look fake a little bit here I'm softening the edges a little bit and mixing the colors together Here I'm adding some phthalo blue turquoise but it has some dry pigment in it so I'm trying to mix it in a little bit but um, some colors you just got to be very careful with them actually Aussie red gold is like that too so it can have some dry patches on your paper which is going to be really hard to remove later And here I have cleaned my brush and trying to soften the edges a little bit. So it's basically like a dry brush. I use my gloves today because some of the pigments that I'm using are toxic like conacridone gold and uh, conacridone overall is kind of toxic so I try not to let it have contact with my skin. You can also splatter using a toothbrush here as well as you can see in the middle of the wing those beautiful patterns that conacridone gold and conacridone burn scarlet gave me which i'm really happy about and here i clean my brush and i'm using just water to have uh, create some patterns in the wing so this is basically like lifting the paint like um, it's done with a tissue but i feel like this way gives you more subtle and more cleaner look and just make sure your water is clean and you're not bring in any pigment in your brush to do this technique. Here I'm measuring with just my brush to see where I'm going to paint next. You can also use a smaller brush for this section, but uh, I'm very used to my brush and I know if it doesn't have a lot of water in it, it's going to give me a very nice thin line. When you try to paint any shapes, try to come up with ways to make it more interesting and abstract looking. So what I mean by that is that don't paint a simple triangle for example try to curve it a little bit or come up with ways to make that shape more interesting looking this is going to help you with a more painterly looking painting here i left a small section unpainted and added some phthalo blue turquoise to my indigo to make the beak more interesting 
here I'm starting to think that my brush is probably <laughs> a little bit big for this section but I'm going to change my brush very soon also let me know if you have your favorite birds or any animal and if you want me to make a video about it and if you like this video please subscribe to my channel it's really going to help me to make more art videos thank you very much now i'm using my rigger brush which gives me a very fine lines and I'm barely having any water on my brush and trying to dance with my brush on the paper to make more interesting marks I decided to paint his eyes using a marker because my paper here is rough surface so it's kind of hard to make a perfect circle using this especially this brush Have you ever tried painting without a underpainting sketch or maybe you want to go give it a try for the first time? Let me know in the comments. Here I'm softening the edges of that indigo that I just added because if I don't you won't see it right now but when it dries it shows a hard edge this is a very good brush for very thin and subtle lines And try not to make his eyes too big either. And you can always add a touch of white gouache to add some highlight to his eyes. But um, I recommend you add a tiny bit of color to your white gouache so it's not just pure white out of tube because white on its own is a cold color and I always like to connect with and gold or yellow ochre to it. Thank you so much for watching and happy painting!